uh, how this event came together. Uh, basically, uh, we in the Distant World Expedition, um, well, first and foremost, I, you know, I want to, I want to thank everyone that has been uh, with with us for the past five weeks. Um, it's a little bit like uh, like the Big Brother cyber uh, cyber game version. Uh, we are all together in this expedition to the other side of the galaxy. Uh, probably not the most sensitive thing to do if you were in your right mind. But hey, if you are an explorer and you are here, then that that means that uh, that you're probably not uh, very sane to start with. So here we are. We are all together. It's uh, it's very funny and it's, it's uh, at the same time it's very um, touching, just to put it uh, somehow. That um, every time we open the galaxy map, we see all this green around us, uh, all these people hanging around in places that for 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 explorers have been uh, mostly lonely places. So it's it's quite an experience. So well. Um, thank you, everybody, for uh, sticking along with us, for coming into this uh, exploration and expedition and making it such a big and great experience. You guys are, are really um, great, and, um, and you guys are doing this experience one of the best experience that me pers personally, me, I have had in a, in a video game uh, ever. Uh, but... Um, with that being said, it's not like I've played many games. Or most of you uh, probably have more experience with other games. But um, yeah, thank you so very much for sticking with the Distant World Expedition. It's been a great pleasure to fly along every one of you. With that being said, uh, one of the things that we as a, as a team in the organization one of the challenges that we have is precisely trying to uh, measure or have a sense of uh, how many people are tagging along, how many people are coming, how many people really left Paleni, and how many people are still with us, um, how many people are quitting or, or are dying terribly uh, to SRVs or crashes or stuff. So. It's it's really hard, you know, uh, in terms of uh, logistics, to to track these things and these figures uh, that could tell us a lot about um, what's the experience that the group is having, you know. So well, but um, then again, it's one of those um, circumstances in where the community of Elite Dangerous have uh, stepped up to the plate because um, um, as wonderful as the community has been, we have come up with the tools that they probably should be in the game, um, but these are, these are the things that are beautiful about the human um, character. Uh, people come up with their own creativity, their own talent, and they come up with these incredible tools and these incredible, um, uh, yes, ways to fill, it, fill up in the gaps. So whatever the game is not providing a service or the game is failing to provide uh, certain information, uh, thankfully, we have some people that are creative enough and that uh, they have the talent uh, to go ahead and say, well, you know what? I think I can do this. Let's fill it in the gaps and let me create this tool to track or trip or a journey or to come up with, uh, with a system to map the galaxy or even create an expedition to the other side of the galaxy as well. So um, first and foremost, uh, I would like to thank Antoinette, who's here. Um, 
for for his uh, incredible idea of uh, doing this Elite Dangerous Star map, for which is a great great database, and uh, that he is uh, recording all these distances and all this data from the game. Uh, thank you so very much. Uh, it's it's been proven to be a great tool for many and for most of explorers. So. Um, I want to, you know, take the opportunity to, uh, in the name of uh, everybody in the community, to thank Q for doing this job, uh, that it's incredibly well done. So, um, a round of applause to you. And, uh, <laughs> thank you. Really. It's a real pleasure for us. So, well, with that being said, and uh, probably we should uh, start, let's uh, start talking about the EDSM then. Um, yes. um, so let's let's switch let's switch uh, the, the plans in here. Um, tell us about EDSM, please, and tell us uh, how the idea came up, and what are the things that w can be done and cannot be done with EDSM. Well. Um... What you can do with EDSM is calculate all systems coordinates based on submitted distance by uh, commanders. So when you submit distance to us, we calculate uh, coordinates whenever we can. And then we got some beautiful maps to show you uh, where, where the system are. So basically, uh, at first, we were just uh, calculating coordinates. Now we have added flight logs in coordination with OD Discovery. And this permits us to have a great flight log and grid map for every commander. And that's basically all we do. <laughs> great. So when did you come up with this idea and um, why, why did you, how, how did you spot this need to, to do this? Uh, at first there, there was a EDSC, was the, <laughs> sorry. Uh, um, EDSC was a, a great seat, was a, doing exactly what we do. It was collecting distance, then he calculates coordinates, but the author uh, went, uh, went away, so we have to find another resource to calculate coordinates. Um, in Umira, done the temple, who was the first version of EDSM. Uh, the ergonomy was very bad, so we had to put something together, and then we come up with the idea of EDSM. I think it was um, last summer, if I recall. And then we t it took us two months to, to rewrite the, the old things. And we launched in September. Uh, if I recall, there was around 25,000 systems at the time. And now we are at 100,000 systems calculated. So it, uh, it's a good move. Great! Wow, that's a that's a huge, huge growth that you got there. Yes. So, <laughs> sorry. All right. A lot of people okay. Good. Die. So, for everyone, I just um, posted the link to EDSM to Anter's uh, website. Um, part of the talk today. Uh, as I was saying before, it's um, it's because thanks to this tool and ED Discovery, uh, it's one of the ways that we have in the expedition to know who's tagging along and what is what is the progress that the players have been made. Um, Antor very kindly he he accommodated. Um, the expedition in in the in the web in in the website for EDSM. So, um, if you guys click there um, and uh, you, you get to the to the website, you can see 
there is a chart there, and, or, and probably, you know, you have to guide me here. I see that there's <laughs> this chart here, and then it says something about systems. Why, why don't you tell us about this chart? What, what does it mean? Uh, basically, it's the number of systems we have uh, each day, so you can see our progression over time. Um, as you can see, uh, it's a, in the end of August, uh, we were just having, uh, let me see, 30,000 coordinates and only 80,000 systems. <laughs> And we have no 10 times that, so it's pretty cool. But basically, the chart just uh, is just basic statistics on how many data we've got over the time. Nothing fancy. But if you you log in into the site, we you'll have better charts, which we call the personal heat maps, when you can see how much uh, flight loves you submit, how much distance you submit. It's a little like the GitHub commits that you can do. So you can see uh, if you have played a lot of time uh, at a certain time or not. But it's better if you register. Yeah, uh, uh, there's a lot more uh, data in that. So um, let's log in. Um, All right, so that's what I see on the page. Uh, there's nothing much. So let me inter interject a little bit here. So for the people that are, are first timers and they're, they're, they're coming here for the first time to try to understand EDSM, um, I guess that the first thing that you guys wanna do is uh, register with EDSM and this you, you have this button on the upper right. Uh, and then it's pretty straightforward. It's just the email and your commander's yeah. name and then a password and the password check right yes uh, i think you you um, no there, there's no confirmation email i, I shouldn't have that to do <laughs> all right so it's even easier because there is no confirmation email people so if you haven't registered yet there is not really uh, an excuse you can just uh, might as well take the opportunity to do it right now so um does it matter what kind of uh, that the commander name has to match anything or? It's better if you use your in-game commander name because uh, when you use ED discovery, for example, or submit distance, that's the commander name we took. So it's better to use the, the in-game one. But oh, okay. it, it does not really matter. Uh, if you put the same on uh, every, every tool you use, uh, it works the same. Um, we are not re related to Frontier, so you you can give it uh, what you want. Oh, okay, great. Uh, yeah, I see that Mishka has a question. Um, but uh, we can, I think that we can tap that a little bit later. Let's just go through the basics first uh, of EDSM for regular, and then we'll we'll zero in how to use it uh, specifically for oh. DWA. Thank you. Great so, all right, so well, once you're registered yeah, and uh, you logged in, then you're gonna be landing in this page that basically uh, tells a story uh, about how many logs entries. So can you, can you enlighten me a little bit here? Like, what's what's a log entry exactly, and uh, what's the difference with uh, I don't know the systems? Is a system equals a log entry, or how does it work? What, what are these terms? Okay, sorry. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. Okay, um, the, the the distance is basically all the distance you submit. So. Distance are only used to calculate coordinates. It's, um, sorry, I changed the world. Um, it's not related to flight logs. Flight logs are all the system when you fly to. So if you go to A to B to A, it's three flight logs. But you, you don't have to submit distance when you submit your flight logs. 
it's totally independent. Okay, so say that... <laughs> Not sure it's clear. All right, so that, that means that, okay, that I'm, I'm flying and then I say that I go five systems stretch. If I don't submit the distance, then that's that's just a regular system, right? And yes. if if I submit the distance, um, that will be a system with coordinates. Uh, yes. And then the five, every jump is a log. That's uh, I'm reading this right. Like every time I jump, that that means a flight log, or each yes. session. No, 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 no. It's it, it, it jumps, it, it's jumps. It's uh, it's a flight log entry. Perfect. Well, you 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 can click them, and uh, it will go to your exploration log when you can see every system you visited, and the time you you are in. Great, great. Okay, great. But, oh, but you have by to the way, send them. all right. Yeah, by the way, I know that many people here in the audience, you guys are probably more, most of you, you guys are computer uh, geniuses and stuff. Uh, <laughs> you know that series, that series that is called uh, Whatever for Dummies? Well, that, I'm a fan because, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not a computer person. Uh, like, if it's idiot proof, it was, it, it was made for me, you know, so um, I know that some of these questions might be, like, very basic for some people. But yeah, believe it or not, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm among those that uh, I will ask everything. So bear with me. We're gonna get to the complicated stuff very shortly. So, um, so now, okay. So suppose that I want to submit a distance for a system. Okay. Um, where do I go? Where do I click, and how how, how do I do it? Okay. Um, from the home page, we have. Um... We have a block named Where Are You? Um, basically, in that block, you type the name of the system you're, you're in. Uh, for example, uh, we can type Where Am I? <laughs> uh, let's type uh, Sagittarius, for example. If you're in, of course. If you're not, uh, you can type any system you want. And um, then when, when you, it leads you to the to the system page. On the page, you can enter reference systems. What we call reference is um, the instance from the system you're in to other systems. Now, do, do you understand what I mean? Uh, okay. So <laughs> let me see. First, I I just type the the system that I am, right? Yes. And then it will ask me distance to. Okay, so I have to put other systems here. Where do I get these uh, other reference systems? Well, um, reference systems are automatically automatically generated by Edison. You just click the generate new reference button on the right. Okay. Uh, seems to be buggy right now. Oh, is that my computer? Oh, no, it works. Okay. It will give you a list of maybe three to six systems. You just enter those six systems in the Gal map and enter the distance you, you will have in the Galaxy map. And when you have done that, you submit the new distance. Um, there's a strong possibility that the coordinates will get calculated, but for for some edge case where you are very far in the galaxy, it's pretty much complicated. So you have to enter more distance. But once you submit, EDSM will try to calculate then and give you a result where we can. Sometimes we have no good match. This means that. The distance are not good, so we are waiting for more distance. So this time we find two or three pairs of coordinates that can work. So we show you the found alternative coordinates, and sometimes you just have the green green flags, which means the coordinates are good and they are calculated and stored in EDSM. And when they are stored, they, they will be shown in your your flight log maps. Easy as that. 
Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> yes, I think I got that. I mean, of course, we're going to explain later on how ED discovery assists in doing yes. all of this in the background. But for now, let's let's assume that ED discovery, you know, without ED discovery, how will it work? So basically, you you will give me a reference um, in that bottom, and then I'll 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 find out the distances um, in the galaxy map, and then fill up, okay. and then submit new distances, and then it will tell it will calculate the distance to the system that I am right now, right? Yes. With right. those with those distance, you will calculate coordinates. Exactly. Perfect. Okay, great. Uh, now let me see. Okay, so with that, what happens afterwards? Like, why do I want to tell you the coordinates of the system that I am? What do you do with that information? I uh, will sell them. No joking. Uh, <laughs> uh, all the coordinates are used by, uh, for example, trading website like EDDB. Uh, EDDB uses your coordinates, so it can tell you that you can trade uh, between two systems and find the nearest system. Um, it can be used to draw maps, 3D maps you can have. I will drop a link in the Discord. Let me. For example, this one, sorry, like that one. So the, the, the more system with, uh... ah, yes, that's what I was doing. <laughs> I was uh, looking for the link. Um, the, the more system you truly get and the more your map is accurate, so you can see exactly where you're going in the galaxy, um, whatever use we have. First, it's all the use we have, but I'm pretty sure other tools use the API to, to make better things. For example, they, you can do root planner, um, because when you have the coordinates, you can you can tell from A to B, you can pass to C, D, E, and etc. Okay, all right. So, all right. Okay. Little by little, then, if... Um, how can I see, it? because now I think I'm understanding what happens is that because uh, Elite Dangerous and interject and correct me, you know, if I'm wrong, but I guess yes, that sir. the thing is that uh, Elite Dangerous doesn't track, uh, as everybody knows, there is no way in game to know, you know, to track your route or where you have been yes. or, or to do a line, right? So in order to do that, EDSM needs to know where where you have been, and in order to do that accurately, it needs to know the coordinates. Yes. So ultimately, all this trilateration thing is so you can build a parallel galaxy map, but a, a galaxy map that it will be telling your story. This is your route. This is what you have done. But for that, you have to tell that map the EDS map, the coordinates, so it can, you know, it can copy or imitate, and and then you can see your route. Is that correct? Is that right? Did I get it? Yes, exactly. Perfect. Great. So where do I see this map? Where do I click from here? To see your own map. That's the question. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Um, you just go in the user icon on the up right and click on My Travel Map. It will lead you to your public profile, which you can perfectly hide if you want, but you can see it for yourself. So you, you have your own map. Oh, great. This is beautiful. Wow. Okay. Uh, all right. This is very clever. This is very nice. I see, you know, I see my my roots and everything. Um, oh. right. okay. okay, so I can see. Yes, I can see the roots and where where I have been in you know in the galaxy. 
very, very, very neat. Uh, and and the controls are very similar to the galaxy mapping game, I see, like to, to move it around in 3D. This is very clever, very, very clever, very well done. All right, so this is the product of all those trail iterations, I guess, that I that 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 you submit, right? Yes, uh, you you can see you have green line and red line. Um, basically, red line are straight estimation between two known systems, but you can have a known system between them. Um, when you have a green lines, that mean you have done, for example, free jump from A, B, and C, and we have all coordinates for A, B, and C. Great, great. This is very neat. Very, very neat. Spectacular. All right. Great. I see also that this has like, um, it's like two two axes here, right? I see, I guess one is Sol and the other is Sagittarius A, right? Exactly. Yes. Great. I think it's so, too good reference to see approximately where you are in the in the in the galaxy because everyone know where we are, so it's pretty cool. Does that mean that that those two reference points are the best ones to use when we are doing trilateration, like to include them when we are trilaterating? Excuse me, you mean Sol and Sagittarius? Uh, yes, yes. Mm, that depends. Um, <laughs> for example, if you try to load the sole system page, uh, there's so much distance that the, the page is backing. You, you can't even load it. It's too long. Um, it depends. It, it can be good code in, uh, reference, but basically good reference, as, um, for example, um, you, you took six, six reference system uh, around where you are, up, down, left, right, uh, front and back. Uh, it's the best reference you can have. So it, it all depends where you are. Um, if you're far from, from Sol, uh, reference system around Sol are good. So basically when you generate new reference, you try to find a system near you where you are so you can have reference uh, not so far, not so close, but uh, around you, it's pretty hard. Um, for example, when you're, you're at big end point, if you submit distance to Sol, deterioration won't work uh, because it's too far, the precision is too bad. So you, you have to find point near you and around you, uh, not just in one, uh, in one direction. Magnific, fantastic. Okay. All right. Oh, Finwen. <laughs> so, yes. Um, all right. So I think that at least for me, I'm I'm happy. I, I'm, you know, I'm a very visual person, so I like I like this uh, drawing of the of the places that I've been, and it's very cool. You know, it shows my epic and great expeditions everywhere in the galaxy and uh <laughs> so it's, it's it's very neat um yeah really really is so i see that of course most of the uh, green uh, lines are like around the bubble the civilization and uh, so that only means that i have to trilaterate more out here <laughs> and something I'll be doing, you know, I'm going to start doing it uh, more frequently. So this is this is very, very great. Um, thank you so very much. Um, I would like to know, like, you know, guys, uh, I think that at, around this point, you guys can start um, doing your um, your questions so far. Like it's, um, I don't know. Besides uh, Mishka. Oh, yes, uh, I know them. Okay. Um... Yeah, Mishka had a, a good question. What was it? Um, how did you get okay. EDSM tracking add to the distant world progress tracker Google Sheet? 
Some people have it in enable. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's a good question. I want to know how to do it. Oh, <laughs> um, well, basically, uh, I've gone to the Google Sheet and I, I uh, copy paste them by hand, each by one. <laughs> so it took a long time. Um, I don't have the Google Sheet. Where is it? Um, uh, basically, um, you, you, you have access to that. Uh, when you go to the expedition page and the participants, um, you can edit them, but it's only for admins, so it's not very useful for, for other people. But basically, you, with that admin, we can note for each waypoint at uh, when people get there, so it gives us um, a rough estimate of where they are. But basically, I've done that by hand, so it's long. But here, yeah, we can track them. So let me see. It's if not I automated, can... it's only manual. Uh, okay, so that's the short answer. So there is no automatic thing, but it no. has to do with manual, right? Yeah, right. Okay. Hold on my hand. Well, Miska, you know, I don't know. Talk to whoever told you that information. You can go back and tell them. You're a liar. Yeah. It's not yeah, happening automatically. Not yeah. uh, but the Google Sheet has a lot of formatting, so I didn't find any way to do that automatically. So I do that by hand. But um, after four hours, uh, I, I tell myself that it should have been quicker to wrote some, some parser, but, you know, maybe later. <laughs> well, all right. So, okay. So after, after we, we already cover, we already cover how to enter, how to register, how to enter information directly in EDSM, uh, meaning distances. Um, mm -hmm. We also visit your, you know, the map of your own travel. Now let's see the distant worlds expedition tracker information. Um, so where do I go from the map and where do I click? Mm. So um, the expedition link is on top of the website. So you just click expedition. Now, for now, we only have that expedition, but uh, in the near future, we hope you we will have bit others. Um, everything, uh, you know, and the, oh, hold up, sorry. Um, we, we can have a lot of expedition if you want. Uh, we have all the tools in that, so. For now, there's only the distant world expedition. So you just click to expedition and distant world. We'll be led to the what we call the expedition summary, where you can see the elapsed time, the remaining time, how many jumps we have tracked for the expedition, and estimation of the total distance traveled. And what we love the most is how many participants arrive to each waypoint. And basically, I think that's all we got from, from that summary. But um, it's um, it's a very good summary. We have all um, all information in one point. Wow, this is this is great. This is very great. I see. Yeah, the start date and then the end date. Wait, wait a minute. May fourteen. I need to talk to Erinus. How come May 14? <laughs> I thought we we're going to make it a bigger I, point in April. Oh, I, I have no idea. I just put four months, but we can edit them if you want. Uh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> just send me a no, date yeah. and uh, I will update. My, my contract with Erinus is three months. After that, we have problems. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> all right, but yeah, all right. all right. But I think that yeah, Beagle Point will will be in Beagle Point. I think that it's going to be around the first week of April. But anyways, so that's that's minor. A start system is Paleni Waypoint 23. Very good. All right, so all kind of data here. Um, 
So according to this, 67% of participants made it to Paleni and yeah. only 26% have made it to Sagittarius A, basically? Yes. Wow. Uh, well, um, uh, what is odd is um, wh when you go to stream A, um, you have to pass exactly in the system so you can be checked as arrived. So if you go only to Sagittarius, for example, you will not be checked as passed on the, on the web point. So that means that, all right, so, well, number one, I guess that we also want to click on the view participants, right, here. Yep, uh, you can. The and then it will break down, you know, um, for everybody's uh, records. Uh, it says waiting. So what you're saying is that if somebody left uh, the bubbles, suppose that today I learned about the distant world expedition. Yes, some people still are learning about the expedition uh, <laughs> uh, today, which is, you know, appalling a little bit because so they, they decide to join us just today. And I'm going straight from the bubble to Sagittarius say. Um, so when I record that I, that I arrived to Sagittarius, I, it's going to consider that I, you know, that, that I went to all the waypoints. How, how, yes. how does this work? Yes, um, if you pass weapon 11, it will, it will count as if you have passed all the previous web, uh, weapons. Um, I did that because when, when I was doing it the other way, uh, just passing to each weapon, um, people were going, were not passing from time to time to weapon three or weapon third and going straight to other weapons. So I just click I addition um, because it's easier like that. A lot, lot of people didn't go to Pagliani, for example. Uh, I think the, the, the real percentage of people on EDSM passing to Pagliani is around 30%, something like that. Great, great. Okay. Uh, yeah. Some directly go to weapon one, for example. They, they didn't go to weapon zero. Okay. Well, you know, it, may, it makes sense. I mean, you know, um, it, it also simplifies, you know, the the way to go around it. So. Yeah, uh, and, can... and there's the fact that uh, some people only enable verbals logging yesterday or one week ago, so they, they cannot pass on the first weapon. They don't have a log, so we, we have to estimate um, another way. But it sh should be pretty accurate, I think. <laughs> great, great. So, well, I mean, going back to what I was saying, earlier um, to the audience is exactly, this is the information that we guys really, um, this is the closest verifiable information that we have about the expedition and about your progress, guys. So um, this is exactly the reason why you want to learn how to use EDSM. And in a few minutes, we will be explaining about ED discovery and how it can assist in keeping this database uh, up to date, right? So, but um, the reason is because it, it, it allows us to know, okay, uh, how the fleet as, a, as an overall is doing? Are the people getting to the waypoints on time? Are people struggling or are people be, uh, ahead of us or behind of us? Uh, you know, so how you guys are doing? Um, that's Erimus and the Turkai. I just go like, oh, look at this one. He must have crashed because he's back in Seoul. That's what I do. But for most, for serious reasons, it's just, you know, to have an idea of, <laughs> of, of how things are doing. Like for instance, look at that. So um, we can see here, right here, you know, Dr. Kai, look, he's only 13%. He's so behind. How come? So I imagine that that's because they probably haven't um, updated, right? Or does yeah. this happen? Yeah, it's because of <laughs> uh, a lack of update. But 
yeah, this is this is valuable information for everyone. Uh, look at that, cancrovantes. I'm 39.55 percent. This is beautiful. Very good. Now, I also noticed, and I don't know if this is common. Um, last night, I think I was in this system two nights ago in this one, uh, 1342. But I went to Sagittarius A, which is like the last uh, known coordinate, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it, it it's still showing this system. Uh, does that mean that even when I'm in a in a system that coordinates are known, I have to tell it like uh, you know, do I have to do something else, or why is not showing Sagittarius A as my last known coordinate? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, it should. You know, I should have go see the card. I don't remember. Um, it should show you the last, the, the last system. But um, for performance reason, we have a lot of cash involved. So sometimes we have five minutes lag. Um, a little latency on what you, what you you push to the system and what we show. Um, that's because um, expedition use a lot of resources, so we have to cache a lot of calculation. So sometimes it's a little late, okay. but you have to wait a few minutes and it should be good. Um, I think. Uh, let me see. Mm. Yeah, there's some cash, cash on that. I think it's five minutes, something like that. All right. Another like, question, uh, uh, probably more to... important. Um, how do I suppose that I, you know, how 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 do I get to be in this list? What can people do to be included in this progress tracker? Like. Is there something that they have to mention to you in the registration? Is something that no. Um, if they are on the official roster, they just have to register on EDSM, um, register with the exact same command name, and when they go to the expedition page, their account is automatically linked. Um, for those who are not on the official roster, you, you just have to register on EDSM, go to the expedition page, and I think the limit I put was, yeah, um, the maximum participants is 1,100, so you can still register to the expedition. You, you, if you're not registered or not on the official roster, you will have a green block telling you that you can register but it's uh, it should be automatic if it's not uh, i'm still checking for a common name and link them manually but normally it should work i think <laughs> that's a long time i didn't link anyone so i think it's working good um, basically just register with the same command name and the system will find you all right great okay good so well um thank you so much for the explanation on that um any questions from from the audience before we moved on yeah i see a couple of one we will be able to define your own person expedition um, we are not planning person expedition but every expedition like delivery uh, can be done um, in just an entry in your database and everything is good to to be tracked so we can we can have over expedition but i don't think we will do personal one um, okay. because basically you have a flight log so i'm not sure it's uh, it's a benefit for us but it can be can be Investigated, and I, I don't really know yet. Um, okay, next question. All right. Uh, who is a written so, list that is determined? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, oh, so the question is, so how is the return <laughs> early status in the DW roster determined? 
Okay, like uh, high Basically, um, we have two fields in our database. That's a, a success debt and an abandoned debt. So when we heard on the form that someone has abandoned, uh, we just note the date in our database and the status is put on. But uh, it's it's manual. Um, I didn't count anything for anyone to to put the status himself. So uh, maybe I should do it. But for now, just report to me, and I and I will uh, put it in the database. Great. That's your own manual. All right. The next so question many, from Patrick Bander. It's uh, why do so many commanders show us not register? Um, I think I can answer that one. <laughs> yeah, um, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's exactly the reason why we did this because we were like, what the heck is going on? Why people are not registering to this thing? And uh, what we found out is that many people, they just don't understand very well what it was about or they thought it was a more complicated process than it really is. So that's the reason why we are having this um, this conference today with the hopes that most more people will register and that more people will um, will be uh, posting and you know uh, reporting to the EDSM. Um, so I think that's uh, that's that's the answer. Don't you think it's fair, Antor? It's a very good answer. All right, from Turk Wainif is, do you have any future plans or features you want to add to EDSM? Mm, no, not really. Uh, <laughs> um, of course, we have a lot of ideas, but um, it's pretty much a daily work. So um, no, I can say. <laughs> okay, great. And then um, I, this is a comment, but it sounds like a question from Watherspoon. Oh, yeah. um, oh um, crap. I, I enter a wrong distance into EDSM. I hope yeah. I can work out how, how to remove it. So, yeah, how do, yeah. You, how, uh, how do you fix or how do you patch a, <laughs> a mistake? Okay, there? it's pretty simple. You just go to the system where you have entered the wrong distance and you can hide your own distance so you just have to click the red button and it will hide it it's simple as that great great all right <laughs> uh this is okay. probably the last we're going to take the last two questions before yeah. we move into the discovery so the first uh, it's from mishka again can you see your hidden distances, for example? No, uh, actually you don't. Um, all five I mean can see them. Um, and we have internal tools when we can uh, basically check if some hidden distances are good, and put them back in the system. And we can, we have a lot of tools like that. Uh, but for now, no, users can see their own hidden distance. Maybe that would be a great idea to to put them. I, I will not that one or or, or, or issue tracker. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, one more question for yeah. Antor, at least for now. Anybody? Any any other questions? Sure. It's yes. everybody clear. What needs to be done? So Idragos is typing and Kaibata too. Uh, pushing the, the Mishka issue. So yes, I Idragos. Yes. <laughs> the answer. If, you know, regardless that you were probably sleeping, the answer was, the, the, the question was answered. <laughs> All right. Okay, guys. Um, well, Anto, thank you again so very much for um, you know sharing this today with us, and thank you for explaining um, this tool uh, to people. I hope that after this, all of you guys go and register to EDSM, so you know, so you can be registered and track. But um, at the same time, um, we want to introduce about um, uh, an excellent tool 
that help uh, to keep track of distances and answer your journey, and that connects and sync with EDSM. We're talking about ED Discovery, one of the most famous tools used for explorers to keep on the logs of their explorations. And for that, we have uh, the amazing, the incredible Finwin with us, who is the author of this uh, excellent tool. So please, Finwin, take the floor and thank you for coming. Uh, Finguin, that's your cue. That's here's where you start talking. Oh, all right. Okay, so we have a technical problem. Thank you for your patience. Our signal will be back up shortly. But I don't have sound, you know, so here it goes like some elevator music. Yeah, Miska, because there is none right now. Test. Very no. good. There he is. Hello. Welcome, Finwin. Thank you for coming. Mm, thank you. <clears throat> so here 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 he is um well um as i was saying um by now i think that most of you guys if not everybody have uh, heard or know about your your uh, wonderful tool for exploration is the discovery so why don't you tell us a little bit about it and why why don't you go ahead and introduce us to what uh, what does it do and how it does it? Uh, <clears throat> it started as a routing tool for me for uh, for over a year ago. Before it was uh, any routing in game, but when uh, I found out uh, <clears throat> in the netlog it uh, showed the system name, so I started to track my travels and uh, collecting the travel history of uh, all my journeys is uh, very fun and a good memory for all the trips I have taken. <clears throat> okay, are you are you okay? Are you good? Yeah, you good. And uh, I have uh, worked a lot to make uh, e-discovery easy to uh, start up lately. So that, uh, now you just need to go to settings and set it to auto, and it start uh, Elite Dangerous, and it should find the log files automatically. And it will also enable verbose logging automatically. Oh, okay, great. Well, um, all right, let me, let me find this. Um, All right, so, okay, let's uh, let's just start a little bit, let's backtrack a little bit, just because it might be people here that they don't know anything about, as amazing as it sounds, yes, there might be people that they don't know about in the discovery of where to get it. So let me try to link you guys to the, um, to the amazing page where you can download the discovery. This tool is one of the most famous ones that we use. Um, 
I think that uh, Finwin, it's normally, you know, it's constantly updating and um, this, uh, this uh, wonderful application to go with your game. Uh, and it, please, by any, you know, uh, by any chance, if you need to interdict a uh, thing, we'll just go ahead. Um, what it, what it basically does, and um, right now you have the link there, is in the exploration text uh, room, which is the room that we're using to share the information for this conference. Uh, again, hashtag exploration text room. Uh, I just link you to the to the thread where you can download the um, latest version for ED Discovery. So what happens is that this application, you install it and, um, and it will start tracking uh, your, your trips and your journeys and your jumps throughout the galaxy. So it's very similar to EDSM with the difference that in EDSM you have to do it manually all right, and ED Discovery will do it for you. You just, you, you don't have to do anything. You just have to uh, start the application uh, with your game and start flying. And uh, once you have it installed, it, it, you know, that's exactly what it will do. It will just go adding the systems as you go. And the beauty of this is that you can then go into it and then you can add your own notes and your own observations say that oh i found five earth-like planets in this system and then you go of course everybody knows you're lying but you go ahead and you just put five earth-like planets in in your notes for instance or whatever that you find uh amazing or or you know interesting and then you put it there like, oh, I met this guy in this place, or pirates activity, or what have you. So it will be logging there. Um, and that's just the most basic of um, functions that this uh, amazing application do. Um, and then you can, as we will see later on, you can um, export all of this data to EDSM which is the interesting part, right? So, but I don't want to get ahead of ourself. So please, um, Fingwin, take the floor and tell us um, what are the, the, the best ways, number one, to download it, to install it, and then what we can do. Um, it uh, looks like my service uh... <laughs> down right now so that you can't download it i have to check it after but uh, normally you download it on the link i send in the expiration ediscovery.astronet.se slash release and where you can see all releases I have made if you want to install an earlier release. But the server is not responding, I have no idea why yet. Well, I mean, I guess that, you know, this is um, um, sometimes, I guess, yeah, the target. What happens. <laughs> It's a possibility, yeah, Blanito. It's uh, yeah. I'm gonna give you a golden star after this. It's a possibility, Targoids. Um, probably somebody in the audience have an unknown artifact with them, so that's what is causing this problem. So, anyways, um, do you have uh, any other link where we can download? This application thing with? Uh, yes, uh, not the latest, but we have one uh, on the GitHub, I think. All right, well, I, we also want to, you know, um, just mind the audience that our friend Finwin, he had. Uh, he had kind of an accident with one of his arms. I hope that you are feeling better, by the way, Fingwin. 
And so he's typing with one hand. So bear with him. Um, um, so, okay. There we go. We have a link to the GitHub where you can download the ED Discovery application. So, well, the installation of the of the software is pretty straightforward. I mean, at least I'm talking as a seasoned user of this program. Um, it's pretty straightforward. And as I said before and earlier in this conference, uh, I'm, I'm kind of a dummy for computers. It's like the first error that I get, I panic and then I just shut it down and then unplug and plug again and hope for the best. Basically, that's how I operate. But in the discovery, it's really, it's been a smooth and uh, it's been an excellent job. You know, it, it doesn't even ask you your name or age or nothing. It just goes, installs, and that's it. It's changing the verbose log uh, for everybody. Uh, so you don't have to to go and activate the verbose log by yourself. So for those people that might not know, Verbose log, it's, uh, it's a line in the app config of the game that allows uh, the game to start tracking your, your jumps and where you're going. And if that line is missing there, then the game is not recording basically where you are or where you are going. So that line needs to be put it there. In previous versions, you had to do it manually, but Finwen has been doing it uh, now automatically with the EDD discovery installation. Um, did I get that right, Finwen? Uh, actually, it's uh, <coughs> when you run the EDD, LA EDD discovery, it uh, checks for if uh, Elite Dangerous is running and it's find the path for the current running Elite Dangerous. And when it uh, changes the file automatically, so it, uh, you only need to start uh, the discovery and elite dangerous and it should enable verbose logging great okay all right so that's that's that so i want to ask at this point i want to ask people like who is not running ed discovery at this point you can raise your hand just who doesn't have it and who <clears throat> All right, what is for this one? Mishka, it's another one. I mean, just for us to have a sense, like uh, who doesn't have it or who's not familiar with it. Oh, Mishka, that's, uh, yeah. That, that that will be a good reason. Miski is saying that he's not running because he's in the bath. So yeah, that's a good reason. Um, Orcus, you have never tried it. Okay, great. Um, hopefully you will give it a, uh, a try after this um, talk with Finwin. All right, so all right, so we have some people here. Okay. All right, great. So yeah, so that's that's the big, that's just the most basic use <coughs> to to either discovery is that it will just track your um, your jumps. All right, what else can we do, Fingman? Um Just. Just tell us and guide us through your software, please. Oh, Fingwen. Oh, I accidentally mute. <laughs> yeah, it uh, shows you a history of all your visited systems. <laughs> And uh, if it uh, are 
to known systems with coordinates, it calculates the distances between for the jumps. And uh, it's also connected to EDDB. So if you are in a populated space, you can see Adyjian's uh, economy and state and governments for the system. Great. And for each system, you can uh, write down a note. For example, if you find something interesting, an uh, Earth-like word or water word, I usually write down in notes. And you can search for your notes later then. So you can find all your water words or whatever keywords you are storing. Great. Okay. Oh, well, let's talk. I have the images here so that you sent me for this presentation. So I'm going to, you know, be putting it there. Uh, it's basically, you know, each one of the, of the different um, screenshots of your software. So, all right. So that's, that's really travel history. Now, would you have another tab here that is trilateration? Uh, we did see some of how this trilateration process goes uh, while we were covering EDSM. But there is, a, there is a tab here that does pretty much that in EDSM. So let me just put the screenshot to upload it uh, for people to see it. Trilateration. So would you mind to elaborate on this, please? Yeah, I try to optimize the suggestion of uh, reference stars when you are far out in deep space like we are now. It's uh, important to get the stars from different directions. Otherwise, it can take a lot of stars to calculate the coordinates. So it's uh, the program searches for good stars in different direction and uh, suggest a couple of stars. I think it's like 16 or 20 stars. That could be a good reference stars that will help you. So I just uh, usually click on like three to five stars. And when I get it uh, to the left, panel so and when i can click on the first star and with uh, automatically uh, copy it to the clipboard so i can just paste it into the galaxy map in elite dangerous and uh, write down the distance and when i press tab in latest version it jumps to next system in my list and also automatically copies it to the clipboard so it's uh, quite fast to get distances now okay great so i see that this is this is very yeah this is akin to what we saw with edsm um it's just the interface that ed discovery is using um or what you do is that you you will be given some suggest reference systems and some known systems uh, there. So you double click on them and then enter the distance to those systems. And then it will trilaterate for you, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. OK, and great. Uh, and it will uh, try to optimize the best suggested references for the current position you have. Okay, great. Good. All right. So after you trilaterate and then you say submit distances, this is when 
all this data is going into EDSM, right? Mm, yes. Yes. Okay. Great. And, so, and sometimes EDSM says uh, it needs more distances. Uh, okay. So you you have to keep doing it until it says trial iteration is complete, right? Yes. All and right. It's because we use uh, different algorithms, so sometimes EDSM is faster to get the solution, and sometimes the discovery Great. is faster. Okay. So, well, let me, you know, just let me post this here. This is, so as you people can see, uh, this is pretty much doing the job automatically in terms of logging the distances and the jumps. And also in terms of trilaterating, there is no escape. You have to do it manually at some point. Uh, either if you do it EDSM or if you do it via ED discovery, you have to key in the distances to those systems. And normally it will take you anywhere from four is the minimum to try that array. Is that right? You need at least yes. four distances. Yes. And sometimes it can go up to seven if it's a difficult uh, or, system. Or 40. <laughs> Oh my God. All right. Well, I yeah. hope. <laughs> when I uh, did the first uh, journey to Sagittarius A, I was the first one to do trilatation <laughs> on the three powders. I had uh, no reference star ahead of me, so it was uh, very tough to get good reference stars. Uh, so okay. That uh, many of the stars I made wet time took like uh, like an average of uh, twenty stars. So it's uh, much easier now. Great. Okay. Well, now um, um, the setting screen, and uh, I probably want to go over this because this is where you want to check the information so your ED discovery can communicate with your EDSM especially. So uh, we, we should have probably have gone through this back in EDSM. I think that you go to your account <coughs> and, um, and then you will see in EDSM in your account, which is on the upper right, you will see my API key. And then you copy the API key, which is like a long series of numbers and letters. And then you bring it to ED Discovery. And then you paste it there where it says API key in the settings tab. And what it does is that that's like a, your particular code to communicate with EDSM and submit the numbers. This is only once, well, one time thing that you do when you're setting up uh, ED Discovery. So it knows uh, under whose account this information is going. <coughs> um, did I get that right, uh, Fingman? Just feel free to interject. Uh, to interject. Yes. And uh, it's uh, important to use the same name for commander name on both ED Discovery and EDSM. Okay. All right. Now, there is another tab. Uh, tell us about the third tab, the one about screenshots. Uh, is that active uh, right now? Is that something that you're still working on? Yeah, it's uh, active. I can take. All right. Let's see. It says uh, <clears throat> it's monitors where you have to enter a screenshot directory for Elite Dangerous, and we know it's uh, saves them as the 
very large uh, BMP files. So we can select them to convert, automatically convert to, for example, PNG or JPEG images. Okay. So we uh, need to, so you can have a another directory for your converted files. And then you can have a few selections of the, the file format name. So it can uh, rename, rename it for uh, with the name with what to include the system, for example. Cool. That's a very, very nice function indeed. Great. All right. Okay. So I think that um, I think that we have covered most of uh, the things in EV Discovery. I don't know if you guys um, have any questions for Finwin now. Um, please go ahead. Uh, let's see what are some of the questions here. Uh, we have uh, <coughs> a nice uh, maps in the EV Discovery. Oh, yes, the maps. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Let me post those pictures you sent me. This is one of the coolest functions now, to be honest with you. Um, I'm, you know, I look forward every day for them. Let me post it here. Let me bring it from. Yes, this is a. Well, this is the 3D map. Thank you, Marlon, for putting it there. Um, you have the. Uh, that's the three D map of the of the ED discovery, and then it shows basically. Yeah, what are we looking at in here, um, Finwin? Yeah, it's uh, every byte dot is a star with no coordinates. So all stars uh, outside the bubble is uh, someone who's. Uh, on a true rotation for a star. And the red star you see is the one you have traveled to by yourself. Okay. So, so you can see I... so you can see Marlon Blake's uh, tour in a, I don't uh, remember which uh, arm. Oh, think... okay. So that's the red dots, right? Yes. That's his... That's his trip. Yes. Okay, great. And you can uh, rotate it around. That's that's awesome. But one of the coolest ones, I think, are the ones that you just included, especially for the distant walls. Um, maps um let me just uh i'm gonna share it here with you guys um and i'm sure that you have seen this picture of some very similar pictures to these ones around in the chats um you see this is something that ed discovery can show you it's exactly how you how it's your you know your route compared to the expedition so this is very cool you know um this is very neat it's one of my favorites i every every night before i go to bed i like to check it i like to see oh let me see what has been my progress you know so i come to this section and uh and i notice this is very very neat yeah it's uh and the map only work if you pass through stars with uh, known coordinates. So it's a big motivation to do relations of stars. Right. <clears throat> so I usually does a relation for like every 500 to 1000 light years. And uh, every time I change direction of travel, so I can see it on, on my map. Very, very, very cool. This is great. All right. Um, 
Okay, so well, I mean, this is this is very straightforward. This this has been an incredible tool. Let me tell you, I really want to um, um, to congratulate you and and uh, and and to to be grateful to you because this uh, this tool has helped me and many other commanders um, in the game to track their their expeditions, their own explorations, to put notes and place place notes into there. And um, so it's it's been incredible to see how far this little uh, application has gone. So uh, thank you for taking the time and coming today and talk to us about, about it. Um, guys, please, um, do you have any questions now for Finwin? Who's not going to be using this amazing tool? together with EDSM. So tomorrow we better see, you know, 100% of commanders register in the EDSM and 100% of commanders using ED Discovery for tracking your expedition. <coughs> and one uh, to get uh, EDSM, to, uh, ED Discovery to send your travel log to EDSM, you have to, uh, for now at least, you push the button sync with EDSM when it will send your travel log to EDSM. So it can track your progress. Great. So That's it's, awesome. it's not uh, automatically yet. We are, it's one thing I want to do in the future. Okay. Great. Now we have a question from Bam, I think. Uh, safe prospecting data, is it coming soon? Yeah, soon. <laughs> yeah, I st will start working on it again soon. As uh, soon my arms heal better so I can sit down and write. Hey, fair enough. Your words can be used against you, so careful. So it's okay. Then <laughs> you say soon, it's fair enough. Um, yeah, I'm also looking forward to that uh, for the, um, you know, the peaks that you have, uh, review peaks that you have allowed us to have about. Uh, yeah, it is discovered in the future, we'll have this amazing um, feature where you can record your prospecting data as you go, you know, in a new planet on a surface and you're finding these materials, you will be able to report it through ED Discovery. So, but that's coming soon. Yeah, yeah and so. you can also record uh, all planets it has and uh, all stars is the idea. Oh, wow, that's great. Sounds fantastic. But yes, that's coming soon, but thank you. Uh, Kai Bata is asking, um, the map column in the travel history, what is it for? Yeah, it's, uh, you can change the color and uh, it's changed the color on the 3D map. So you can mark different sections of your travels and see different colors on your map. Oh, that's a good question. Where is that column? Now I'm curious. So how do you how do you change the color again? Yeah, you can uh, mark a couple of lines, and when you right click and uh, select star map color, and select another color. Oh, I see that now. Ah. So that's for your 3D map, basically, yes. right? And awesome. We'll properly use it on the 2D map. Like I can... Okay, so I could change the color for all the stage one of the expedition, and then another color for the stage two of the expedition, and so forth, right? Yes. Beautiful. Great. And I and I know uh, one user changed the color for 
earth-like words and one colorful water words and so on. Great. Um, I think Orcus has another question. Uh, does it filter out CQC systems from logs? Uh, it should, at least. <laughs> and uh, I f it did, and when uh, Frontier did change the log format, so but the latest version should uh, filter it out again. Gotcha. All right. Okay. Um... And in the latest versions, you can, if you get the wrong system from CQC, you can right click on it and choose hide system. Okay. Great. Um, the next question is coming from iDragox, and he's asking, this is regarding to that feature that you just mentioned that will be coming soon, regarding the planets and the stars, we, we will be able to add them uh, to the log. So his question is, will this mean that we will be able to account for the monetary value of systems such as Captain's Log does once prospecting update uh, hits. Yeah, I'm thinking of adding that too. All right. Okay. Yeah, I guess that you know it's something that um, I drag us. I think that we're still working on it, so we probably will have that and more. Right, Finwin? Mm, yes. You will add. All right. Okay. So. Let me see. And then, uh, any more questions, guys? I just see some comments. Um, so, okay. I think that we will take a couple of more questions. But um, thank you so much to Antor, Net, and to Finwin for coming out today to explain these two wonderful tools. EDSM and ED Discovery, and how you can use them to track your journey, especially now that we're moving after Sagittarius A, where it's pretty much on charter territory. Um, not many people have gone beyond Sagittarius A. And uh, so now that we are all moving towards that direction, I think this is the right moment to start using them yeah it's uh, i have one tip for trilatation when you get uh, further out and it's uh, it can be hard to get a lock when you get uh, like 30 40 thousand lights here out but it's uh, easier if you are traveling uh, like five, 500 light year up or below the galactic plane Okay, great. Yes, I mean sometimes it, it can be a little bit tricky, and uh, but I guess that uh, we will be a little bit uh, patient and uh, and work with you guys. Um, this is a really awesome job, um, what you do, and and I think that uh, it everybody benefits because I love to show, you know, like. Everybody, everybody have a family. Everybody have, like you know, significant others, kids, or what have you. So when you go like, oh, I'm doing this trip through the galaxy, nothing works like showing them. Look, this is the galaxy, and this is where I have been, and this is where we're going from here to there, and this is all what we have. Like nothing talks like an image about it. I think that if I would tell them like, oh yeah, we're going from this arm to the other arm and we're crossing the gap of whatever, uh, you know, people will look at you like, what the heck are you talking about? I mean, more people anyways. But when you have this map of the galaxy laid out like that, like you and, uh, and uh, Anter help us to lay out, it's a fantastic thing. So I, I you know, I, for me, it's, 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 it's great. And thank you so very much. I've been using that for, a year now, I want to say, and uh, and what I used to do, and this is another tip for you guys, um, something that I find very cool about the discovery is that in in the log in the log um, uh, window, what I do is that I select all, 
and then I copy that into an Excel sheet. And then, well, I'm, I'm very proficient with Excel. So once I have the data there, it's like, I can do whatever I want with it. Like I select how many I like planets I, I had or how many high metal content planets. It's, it's wonderful. So this is something that you guys want to probably tap into it. So anyways, any questions before we this means Antor and Finwin. Yeah, and I must say one more thing. Uh, that, sure, uh, go ahead. I'm very thankful for all the help I get. Now it's uh, several other commanders that uh, are helping me to add more features and fix bug fixes in the ED discovery. It uh, was a good decision to put it out as open source and uh, we are many now that uh, are working on it. Okay, great. All right, so um, uh, Finwin is, uh, go ahead. We, uh, yeah, we have uh, one page on the GitHub where you can, if you get uh, problems or find a bug or if you have a great idea that you want to have in the future, you can enter it there and we will read it and try to solve it. I can post the link here. Okay. Yes, very interesting. Green, thank you. Sorry about the dog. All right. All right, so thank you so very much. Yeah, I'm sorry. Thank you so very much um, about your donation, guys. Yes, uh, let's help these guys. Um, the link is right there. And uh, thank you, everybody, for coming out. Another great, great thank you to Black Needle, who has been recording the event. So probably this will be available soon. Uh, so for anybody that you want to share or go over again this information.